wrote. It was a song actually, and I, you know, when you think, ah, oh, I wish I'd recorded that or written it down, because I can't find it anywhere. I can remember the first bit. Do you want to hear a bit? Sure. Once upon an hour in a land far, far away, two little vegan cannibals were chatting through the day. One called Ziggy and one called Zog, sitting on their arses on a big brown log. <laughs> After many hours, Zog's belly began to rumble. He whinged and he complained, he moaned and he grumbled. And he got up to his feet and shouted at Zog. Something like that. And then he said, he tries to eat him because he's a cannibal, because he's hungry. Anyway, I wrote this entire poem about two vegan cannibals who basically decided not to eat meat again. And then they basically enter into a, a clearing and there's a clown, big fat clown. And they go, mm, and then they basically eat him, right? <laughs> <coughs> so, <laughs> and it's all based upon the joke, two, two cannibals sitting on a log eating a clown. One turns the other and says, does this taste funny to you? So uh, a, a poem inspired by a joke. Anyway. I'm going to see if I can get this. My new stand. I need a large rock to put this on. Or a pillow. You prefer a pillow or a, or a big... Hey, how, how, many, um, how many people are you in contact with? Do you think? At least 100. Really? Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> if you chat with Gino long enough, you end up with 200. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, who are you again? All right, yeah, Gino, right, okay. So you, I don't know you do it, no. But Gino thinks it's a good idea. And then some, you meet, you chat, and then they disappear. Because <clears throat> everyone's working on their own stuff, 100%, then, you know, and then they work on people who can they think they can get their project further, which is normal, very natural. Um, but I think certainly energy around Gregory now. I do like his idea. I think I'm, I remember him saying that before about having time zones, you know, people working in that time zone, this time, this time zone. And then we, uh, because it's, it can be very hard to connect in ter zones. In try is easier, although even that, you know, people in different countries, different cultures. How, how many people would you say are you communicating with like at the same frequency as me? Well, every day I talk to Nigel, who's in my view, apologies to yourself and everyone, is a superior being. He is, uh, I have no fucking <laughs> clue. I have no clue where he's from. He has a pyramid in his left eye. He's a ghost, he doesn't exist. Uh, his presence, his perception, his maybe you could do that. He's just very subtle. He's he's basically slowly transforming his whole island just by his presence. This is face to face. He's he's yeah. Face, I meet him. I meet him. He lives there, two hundred meters up the road. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely to have him. So he will sit there, and no matter what's happening, he'll just say, "Well, okay, let's let's sit down and hmm." And then he's got his dog Oddy. He's Audi does all the work. I, I just basically look after him. It's my job. <laughs> um, but he he can see things and he basically at night um, he travels. He just basically enters other bodies, walks around, and has a few looks at things. And wow. he's got immensely broad knowledge. And I can just say someone's name and say, Well, that person's probably got a little problem with the liver. So what I'm gonna do is print out what you sent me, the the at George's bookstore. The map. Sit with, yeah, and sit with him. Lovely. Say, what do you think? He goes, and say, I, I can guarantee you that, that looks very nice. <laughs> what, what's your question? <laughs> so that, that'll be, that'll be you his know thing. The, you know, the question I would say is like, what's missing? Because okay. there's, there's six, there's six frames of six. And it's kind of like, once you've answered all of them, you sort of have formed a tetrahedron that are the six bonds of a tetrahedron that are like the relationship bonds. And then that tetrahedron is the sort of the, the relationship from your 
conceptual understanding and then from there you know how to communicate with them so if you're talking with a spiritual master like this guy it sounds like who's like a member of your team or an ally and you love him and you're in just a service conversation and from the point of view of let's say the school he might be an originator and he's a potential one those six parts form how you see him <coughs> and how you communicate which would yeah. be very different than if he was a dark lord, an enemy, and you're in a business field, and you hate them, and they're a potential client. <laughs> well, it, and it's very interesting how, so for example, if you have, say, six different people who feed back different things to you or project different things onto you, saying, okay, what's happening in me with that particular person? It's not happening here. What is my attitude towards this person? Mm. So... <clears throat> Example, I've got a friend right now who's having a lot of nightmares about her teeth falling out. Very vivid, very powerful, and it's, it's terrifying her, even in her waking hours. So I'm going inside me, what's that about? And for me, that's deep change, you know, huge, you know, you chew on the word, you know, everything you're saying is speak, everything is transforming. And that, I've been fed back that many times that when I'm with people, that tends to happen. Their shit comes out and they throw it at me. So I get all this crap, I'm sure that happens to you as well. People just go Bleh! and you go, oh, gee, what's it like? all right, sure, thanks for that. And then they might say, right, that, and then, then they move on. I mean, that's your job done. Or they say, actually, because then they might, they might pin it down to say that person makes me feel really bad. It's his, it's his fault. Where actually it's a service to, so I, I'm not ever, ever sure to, to explain that to people first. And people who have been close to death or who know death or who love death, because love, love death is probably one of the most beautiful things, we die every moment, really, is that when they know that, then they go, actually, yeah, this person has taught me a lot. Um, Nigel teaches by disappearing and doesn't talk to anybody. And then you, you, want, you keep wanting to grab him and he'll wait a few days and say, good morning. And he's exceptionally reliable, the most reliable person I know. He will always do that and you remember a conversation from three years ago so <clears throat> there's that and then there's the people who you know the false prophets who have a lot of knowledge it's all it's all in memory but it's not embodied yet they haven't got it in their physicality and they don't walk their talk there's a lot of them um, and there's a lot of the young ones who are all in their minds thinking they've found the answer because they've had their first spiritual awakening um, so I think what, what your map does, first of all, it's tactile. So the, you know, Rudolf Steiner said the first sense is, is touch. Because as soon as you touch something, you realize you've got a body. Um, that's that. And then you've got something to look at. <clears throat> and I think the side, I, I said in my little document, side by side, not face to face. So there's like a Zen saying, go through. So when you've got it, if you're sitting next to somebody, if they're in front of you, they can project onto you. Whereas if the next, you see, you see that, the relationship thing, yeah, can you talk about that a bit? And you're walking through the map side by side. Another thing I forgot to put in the document is a fantastic metaphor or analogy used by a friend of mine in the Netherlands who said that she learned over the years that if she goes to people who are asleep or who are just sort of drifting along and, and says, here, read this, this fucking good it's just you learn a lot they'll just go yeah yeah okay but she said it's like going to the beach and people sun lounging looking at the sun is like dazed and then you say here there's a great thing on event tonight you know come along and they'll go yeah right and then they'll go back to sleep again whereas if you're playing with sandcastles in front of them which is what you do as well you know dressed and doing your singing and doing your thing people go they're having a great time <laughs> I want to play with them now and then they, they come in and the, the last bit was a woman Letitia Layson who lives by the gift she's an amazing uh, elder of the uh, uh, Isis Isis she's a, she's a high priestess of Isis lives in California amazing woman uh, she's Singapore, um, Indonesian she said in community it's really important that when you meet anybody whether they're plumber or the mayor, that you understand what their next move is in their lives. What's their next move? Not what 
because you, they can't go to where you are. Uh, they need little steps. So you say, what do they need? Actually, what this person needs is like a job or needs um, a bit of help, help with having split up from a partner. So you help with the next phase and then you take them to the next and eventually they end up in your house. So that was a really useful thing for me because I often would go around and say, why don't you get this? This is like obvious. And they're yeah. like, yeah, it's like, it's like it's too much information. And um, therefore with the Greeks here, all they want is money because they don't have any. And they are also very shamed. It's interesting. Someone told me about that. The Greeks said it's shame that they're dealing with because they're a culture that is immensely rich you know, with their backgrounds. And here they are, 12 years struggling to even survive. You've got people with PhDs, like, like Vasya has got two PhDs and three degrees and she's working in a bloody souvlaki place because she can't get a job anywhere else. And so there's a lot of shame and embarrassment. So it's, it's, it's how to support that as well. So they're, they're very proud. They don't like to receive help or look at it. They're just like, no, I do it for myself. So that's very hard to get through. Whereas I find that any any Greeks here that are born in Canada or, or America, they're very different. They've got that entrepreneurial drive and they know how to work. Whereas many of the Greeks don't, they want to just be the boss and let the Albanians do all the work. And the Albanians are happy to do it because they have, they have got even less than them. And they went through war and many of them walked over the hills like for seven days through the hills to get here. I mean, these guys are so strong. And they just get on with it. They never complain. They just go boom, 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 boom. Ten hours a day working, building walls like that. You know, that they build all these walls, and that's you can see them everywhere doing that. Amazing. Yeah, I was going to say that. You know, I can feed back to you now what I wrote yeah. about you. Yeah. Um. So the first one, really, I put this at number one was if you can clearly differentiate between Elijah and Captain Sweet, even even physically, so even just putting a hat on. Yeah. Or take your glasses off. Yeah. Put the hat on. Because when you've got your glasses on, you've got that very strong presence. Uh, because many times, as you know, you're kind of getting very manic and very energized. And that fits Captain Sweet, but doesn't fit yeah. Elijah. Yeah. Um, yeah, slowing down. Uh, when you put the maps up, they were going up and I was reading it and then you took it away just as I was almost I, you know, holding it, hold it, holding it there for a while and then explaining a bit more so I can see it. Um, I like giving attention rather than paying attention because uh, mm. attention is, is, is free. I really, uh, I do, but when you do get enthused and energized and start swearing, it's great because it does, it will allow people who feel the same to, because you're expressing it for them and you're finding the words and the language to express it and giving them a framework. It's one thing that Chris Thompson did very well, even though, if, if he'll ever listen to this, but he's, he's an arse, um, is <laughs> he would give people a frame for what they already knew. So they've got the knowledge, they've read it, they've listened to it, they've heard a thousand podcasts by X, Y, Z, but they can't say it for themselves because they can't structure it in their minds. Whereas you, you do that for them, you help them through that. Right now you've got a structure to think about it. Yeah. That's very, very valuable for people to have a frame of right. When they meet anybody, is this person, what is this person in front of me here? You know, because they come into my life for a reason. Are they here to teach me something? Is it a momentary thing? Is this for a longer period? What's the essence of what's happening here? Um, they may start out as an enemy, but as that lovely phrase is an enemy, who said it? Maladoma Somme? I'm not sure. An Maybe. enemy is someone, I didn't know, I think it was Steiner again, or maybe it was a different, maybe it was actually, uh, I think it was actually Mark Twain. Yeah, it was Mark Twain. An enemy is someone I don't understand yet. Which is really nice. If I find out more, I realize, ah, that person's the same. Just they've got a different approach to how they respond to the problems they have. And then spiritual masters, um, I think there are people who are, have mastered some spiritual knowledge. But I think we're all in this mastery. We're always mastering and getting more and more. And that was one of the things that um, Chris is very good at, actually. He, he was very good at saying there's no such thing as enlightenment, like a moment. It, it never ends. So we go, he, he's got this model where you go to 
he goes beyond you know as well like you do it's like it's not just you get to like level five and oh, that's it i've done it it's like you get because what the internet's done and the environmental movement has done has made us aware of nature consciousness so we're now aware of the earth and the big moment is when we saw the earth from outside for the first time in the 60s when they had that we had that photograph you know of there's a little blue planet and <clears throat> once you go to nature conscious then you go to human species consciousness and then you go beyond that into solar consciousness which is christos which is the christ consciousness and then beyond that you've got galactic consciousness and beyond that you're going more so there's that that you know but there's no human alive is even anywhere near galactic consciousness can you mean because we're not in the galaxy we're in it but we don't have the so once we start traveling in the gal galaxies or even 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 though we dream and we can do that in our in our dream time or in our in meditations we're physically not out there but when we physically get further suddenly that will open up and only takes one human to do it so as soon as that human's out there going oh right there's mars or stands on mars suddenly the whole species awaken to a different thing and um oh. you know Question my friend, but my friend Nigel, sorry, just the last thing he jokes. He says, "You know, when I was uh, when when I was handed over by my alien parents to my my own Earth parents, they just you know here have this. It was very happy, very nice, uh, and and from time to time they do take me back on the ship, and you know they they, they sort out my shoulders and give me like old, you know, ah, and then I come back down again. So <laughs> he's." <laughs> And he says that as he's walking my dog, and then he says, "Do you like a coffee?" And he goes back to 3D and into this. He keeps doing it. He goes, and he goes, oh, "Now, if you want to, 61." He says, uh, "Now, if you want to," f he doesn't talk about flying, but he he just. We were having lunch one day two years ago, and he said, just eating his you know his rice, and just went, you know, you'd be walking down the beach one day, you'll just do that with your shoulder, and you'll you'll lift off. Can you pass me the water? <laughs> and I say, "What did you just say?" About what? <laughs> and then we're walking with his dog, and then a cat suddenly appeared. I mean, literally just right next to us. And audio went crazy. And then I said, did you see that? It wasn't there before, was it? It wasn't there before. It just appeared. Yeah. So anyway, let's walk over here. And so he's like making little pricks of attention. You got that? Because that's going to happen. Things are just going to appear out of fucking nowhere. And it's going to freak people out. Oh. <laughs> they're gonna go did i just see that what did you just see that thing that was in front of us no because they're asleep but people who are like coming out and then they that's and i've seen all sorts of stuff in, uh, in places through people's eyes and entities coming in so you go i, I see you and then they don't like being seen <clears throat> especially tell them to fuck off you know <laughs> you've had your fun <laughs> get back wow. to where you came from Oh, um, so can I ask a question about, yeah. I had another question, but I think I forgot it, but uh, your general impression of the maps, like your first kind They're of. They're great. They're great. I think you have a combination of, I think there's a combination of the humor and the structure and the, I do like, I do like that. I think you drew it on the ground in that car park when you, you know, you had fuckwits or complete idiot or something like that. It's like that brings a levity to it that is a desperate required, I think, because I mean, even Gino's model, it's great as a model. It works for him. It's very stiff. It's very, you know, and we've all, we've heard that before. We know that bit. And he's doing all this, this and endocrine systems and it's all very academic. Whereas I want this to be able to say to my sister, who doesn't have any idea but it's right look here's elijah's maps right you've got relationships with who right with michael with your kids yeah with dad and you've got what what are your troubling ones right you, you don't get on with them do you do you know why what's happening so just that kind of thing is very easy to look at and then i think examples of so for example and each one you've got examples of that and then you can click people can click on it and go ah right i see what that because oftentimes when we describe it in language it's quite nebulous not People can't yeah. hold on to it. So uh, examples from your experience or your life. And I think it's how you present yourself so that you're treated with respect as Elijah. And then you're very aware to say, listen, I'm now going into character. All right. 
to Captain Sweep, who's got a much broader vision of all, all these things, and off you go. So I'm saying I'm happy that if, if, if you want to, if we want to role play you and Gino's strategy group, and I'm listening as a person, happy to listen to how you'd present that. And when when is it? Oh, well, I don't know, because I, I might have uh, overstepped the boundary. I, after Denise gave a, a talk last week, this week, and there was just a few of us, five of us, I think, maybe six, and it was her first talk. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it, it's a big thing to have your first talk. It's a big thing to put your stuff together. And, you know, we're, it's a very kind of a, I don't know, scholarly group. Mm -hmm. And I gave, I was just wondering, like from everything I heard, what I didn't hear was kind of like, what's her main main gift and service to the world? So I just asked what that was, just trying to help mm -hmm. help her because she, she's just bringing her work into the world sort of, right? And she's just creating her container. And essentially everything I have is to help someone like her. She's very mm -hmm. talented, uh, can't work in the old paradigm has a bunch of stuff that she, she wants to do and could do anything really. But it's kind of like how, you know, again, how to structure it, how, how to make your own container and stuff. And so afterwards, I sent her a, a little message saying, congratulations, you know, how did that feel? She didn't respond. And then I, then I wrote quite a lot. I, I was on quite of a roll. I can do that with certain people where I'm just, I use that as my, my communication. And I wrote, I'm not quite sure what I wrote, but it was more like, hey, that was great. Uh, I'd like to support you in whatever manner. I was, I was trying to enthusiastically support her, but she may have gone into a bit of trauma after, or maybe there's something that triggered in her. Or, but my immediate thing is because if someone doesn't respond, a lot of times people don't. Like I do these big downloads and nothing. <clears throat> and then you feel either overexposed or you feel like you crossed a boundary. Now they're triggered and, and you might have, in my case, I might lose the relationship because I, you know, gone through many cases where I, I don't realize sort of like the too much too quick or just like, I feel like a gusher now. Like, Well, maybe, maybe that's just to, to proceed, to, to, to proceed that with, you know, I, I've got many things to say. Are you open to receiving it? And when they say yes, then you can download it. I mean, there's a guy right. in Canada called Benoit who downloads in screens of stuff. I mean, a more immensely poetic figurative language is beautiful, but it's so much. It's like, whoa. <laughs> and only, only when I knew that he was downloading and doing that, that he's happy that, you know, I read bits of it, but I ignore most of it. And I, when, he, when I talk to him face to face, he's very different. Yeah. Um, so, and he loves Van Morrison. He brings Van Morrison videos into nearly everything he does. Okay. So, or Bob Dylan. And um, I, I get him now because I've talked to him and I, I get that he's an extreme trauma. And because he's really open, because he's traumatized, he just <clears throat> stuff's coming in. He's just writing it like that. <clears throat> like, like literally three, three, four hundred words on, <laughs> on the divine consciousness of this. And it's pure gold. And people love reading it, but they don't engage with him because there's nothing to engage with. Whereas Benoit, the man, is a beautiful man who's working with his, his daughter who's in a wheelchair. He's a stay-at-home dad. He's got a drug addict son. He's trying to set up a little village to look after them, you know, and finding ways to do that in his local community. But he doesn't have the social skills to do it. And he's being arrested and things like that, aggravated assault. And he's got, he's a big man. <clears throat> so he just, how do I do this? I don't know how to, you know. So he just writes. That's his way of getting it out. Can I share a bit about Little Red Monkeys? Sure. So Bala Pillai, who's a downloader, he's always right and off he goes. <laughs> he mentored me in 2001, 2002. He said, you are energy. He's a Malaysian guy. And uh, he came up with this model for a networked mind colony. He was doing this thing called mind, mind ecosystems and telepathy. And he was talking about this long time. He used to work for Reuters. 
uh, left that world and then basically organized 300,000 Malaysians, Tamils on early Yahoo groups, things like that. <clears throat> Genius. And um, he came up with this thing. So, you, so little red monkeys climb icy mountains to dance in colorful carpets. That's the mnemonic that my friend, uh, what's his name? Gordon came up with. So L is leaders, we need leaders. R is resources, people who can get money, laptops, stuff, contacts, places, venues, little red. Monkeys are the magnets, those people that just naturally magnetize people. The marketeers, the way they write. Little red monkeys climb, C is the creatives. You need creatives, of course. I is the intuitives. I see intuitives. There's a lot of organizations that could do with intuitive to say, nah, nah, let's not stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down. We need to go. There's something happening here. Then the mountains, uh, M is the makers. People who just make stuff. Designers, you know, creating maps, that kind of stuff. Uh, to dance, uh, I see to dance. Dance D is the doers. A lot of, play, lot of groups don't have the doers. Just get, get it fucking done, right? Uh, and the last two uh, colorful carpets are the, as Bala called them, the imagination starved. <laughs> he calls them the, the collectors, the bean counters, you know, the accountants, and then the C's, the contracts, the, the lawyers. So the, the count, and, and what happens in the old paradigm is it's the lawyers and the bean counters that drive everything. Yeah. It's all the money. We don't have enough money to do this. We don't have a budget. And then everything's led by that, whereas it should be the other way around, where the leaders say to the creators and intuitives, right, what's happening here? Right, let's make that. And then the bean counters just come on behind and says, right, we don't have the money to do it, but we can do that. Yeah. So that was a little red monkey's claim. You know, that was a really, and he, I, I, and when I was with the Uni One group, which is this uh, Moses in LA, and there's like nine or 10 people hanging around having these conversations that weren't going anywhere. And I said, let's do a thought experiment in a Norwegian cabin. And he went, are you up for that? And he went, Everyone went, yeah, that sounds cool, whatever. So I just got everyone to go to this cabin and stand outside the door. And so we've got a north, south, east, west entrance, exit. Uh, we're all here. And just now choose which door you go in and where do you sit, stand, and whatever. So Gina was on the call and immediately, no, the first person was Alex to say, I've gone in the door, I'm in the corner by the fire sitting down with my backpack and my knife, cleaning my nails, waiting for instructions. That's what I do. Clear, crystal, bang, done. Shuts up, then listens. Gino goes in and makes a sofa in the middle. Gets his tea. I just want to talk to Moshe. He wants to talk directly to the, the vision holder. He's not interested in anybody else apart from that guy, right? Which is fine. That's his way. Has the tea. He's brought tea. Thank you. Uh, Moshe stands by the door. Doesn't go in. He's welcoming everybody. So he's good at that. He loves that. Uh, but he's not going in yet. Uh, then we had Big David, who goes straight to the south, walks out the door and says, I'm off to go and get water. It's this beautiful scenery. I'll see you later. So he's gone, right? <laughs> One guy goes to the west, look to the, towards the, sorry, east, go, look towards the sun and the garden. Another guy's in the garden. And then another guy, Chris, is patrolling it. He's patrolling the perimeter. So he likes to protect and defend spaces before he goes in. And I waited to the very end. Moshe then went inside and sat with Gino and had a cup of tea together. But then he then put cushions on the floor in a circle. So Gino's still on the sofa saying, I'm it. And then Moshe's gone and down and sat on the ground and put circle, right? <clears throat> so eventually Gino sits down. <laughs> and then we all, and then we all, and then another guy comes in and goes, I'm not very good at visioning things. I, I just think I'll just, sit in the floor near Mosh and, and look out the window the nice day. So that he's very knowledge based, very academic. He just reads written stuff. And I came in, I did, I patrolled the other way around with Chris and then came in. So, and that was it. And then the, the base at the end of it said that that was extremely useful because within 20 minutes, we'd understood how each person preferred to function in a group. Wow. So, uh, Alex is a doer. He just sits there waiting for instructions. David just prefers to go and see the scenery. He's not really that engaged with the group yet, but he does eventually come in when he's asked to do something. And then Moshe, as the vision, he wants to have people in circles, and Gino wants to just 
be the stuff with his tea talking to the main guy and then he'll go so ah, i'll put you in touch with 400 people then i'm off <laughs> i've got my flight in 10 minutes all right see you later but here's my model bye <clears throat> bless him he's great at what he does that's what he does i wouldn't be i i, I keep saying I, I would have met many of the people i've met uh and doing what i'm doing without without his uh intervention um so yeah that kind of thing as a vision for groups and teams is, is really wait really useful. Uh, tell me the context again of how that started was that that was in a group call or chat or yeah what happened was um so basically big david after divorce in switzerland took me to brussels well i decided to go with him i said i'm coming with you he said uh all right cool so i ended up in brussels this guy says come on in i looked at me graham okay you're here i said i am welcome and we sat down listen he said and the first thing which is beautiful he said i realized that you've just arrived in europe so I'm offering you a place to stay, some dinner, so that you can relax about food and shelter. And yeah, I said, thank you. Because I, I was stretched financially and everything else. So he did that. And then he and David were doing work for three days. He did a great healing on me. He just let stuff go, get it out, puke, all this stuff it was great. I think I actually got COVID that weekend in Brussels because Belgium was really bad. So I was ill for three days after that. But then through that, he then went to LA to set up what's called Uni One. Uni One is this conscious gatherings of people. And Moshe is, is Uni One dot house, H O U S E. And uh, I think you could be an ambassador for Vancouver and Canada in that. And I'll introduce you at the appropriate time. It's more grounded and real than Gino's Atarabab stuff at the moment. Because he still pegs you as someone who doesn't know how to do X, Y, Z. He doesn't, you know, he's like that. He says, no, he's got his, he's got his chess game and he's got Alan just there. He's not ready. He's not there. He's high. He's too out of, you know, Attila is way off the ground, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Graham's Andros, he's fine as long as he does what I tell him, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can't wait to there. Gino starts to listen avidly to all our calls because he realizes that, that he's being mentioned so much, you know? <laughs> go, it's cool. It's good to be alive. That's all he says. At least he's it's being said, yeah, he always he's a brilliant man. Um so uni one dot house. It started in Brussels, Moses, Moshe is part of the Jewish elite. He doesn't like talking about it, but he is. And he, he, he struggles to accept the fact that his father was one of the top Kabbalah guys in the world and have access to millions because of the Jewish international network, you know, millions, hundreds of millions. So Moshe went to Belgium to set up a youth section, other groups, like three or four different entities structured. But when he was there, he realized the EU is such a, awful place for people who work with they get burnt out they get abused and so on so he basically sets up these groups for people to come and to share and to be in presence to breathe together and as he said about the kabbalah as long as 10 people gather in the presence of god then things happen and he said it doesn't have to be men it doesn't have to be 10 it just has to be a few people gathering in presence light a candle breathe allow it to come in that's what he did for 10 years there and many people came and they structured it and then someone came up with we need to scale this because in Brussels, there may maybe 100 people in a small community. It was all gift-orientated, people donating. And then he went to LA because he's got, again, contacts there. And he sits by this tree all the time. And he doesn't do WhatsApp or groups. He just sits and goes, hmm. always wearing white, rabbi beard. He's a rabbi. And... Uh, so he was gathering people in LA and I put them in touch with Gino, with Chris Cochran, with other people. I connected all with people. And uh, he's one of these, whatever appears is fine. Just let's just go and see what, you know. So I then move in and say, right, I think there's some structure here. And I did the thought experiment. So there was like uh, nine or 10 of us on the call. And it only took 20 minutes. And the next call, a guy in Brussels basically gave his academic presentation on sociocracy plus this sort of model for businesses and it's brilliant it's it weaves together huge amounts of stuff but i don't know how much of him is in it i don't know what he's adding to what his particular gift is he's very he's, he's a classic nerd 
and he admits it. Um, but it switched off a lot of people. So now Moshe, they, then Moshe had a physical meeting and all these people like Justin, I put him in touch with Justin, other people went down to LA and the main guy, Ben, who's a friend with celebrities, he's good pal of Eric Schmidt, he's uh, from Google, he, he knows film stars and he's very wealthy, he's got no problems with money. He's basically taking the business off and there is no team. Right, so all these people giving, 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 supporting, and he's going, yeah, great, it's wonderful, right? Thanks, well, I'm doing this. And I talked to him, and, and he he's, uh, he says he's coming to Greece. And I said, well, you can't get into Greece. He goes, oh, no, I've got a friend who knows a prime minister. I'm like, all right, fine, well, okay. <laughs> that's the, the Jewish network in this, you know. Right. But I'll see it when I see it. If you turn up and I meet in Athens, great. If not, so he, what they're doing is combining Uber with um, Airbnb with Meetup. So the idea is you're on your phone, Uber, you go around looking for a yoga or a breath work or a whatever, music, drum, drumming groups, you know, whatever. And you see what's near you and then you click on it and then for the, the host of the house, so like norm, with Airbnb, people host a room at 50 bucks for a night, but if you can host a, your space for like 10 together, then you charge like 50, 60 bucks, you're going to get, you know, 600 euros, maybe 600 bucks. And, and that's more. And then the host, the, the sorry, facilitator would then do his or her work and get maybe 300 and then the company gets money. So doing all of that, nice. you basically see in Vancouver, you facilitate all your, your gatherings. Yeah. You could be doing three a week, getting 200 euros every single, $200 every single time you do it. Yeah. Plus the people that you're doing it with, are learning about it and if they want to become facilitators you then train them up and then you they pay you to do that so you've got all this and they've got a hosting training they've got facilitator training and they're going to get the techie side so ben's getting all the techie people he knows people at google he knows people at everywhere so he's getting the money to make that happen and scale it massively wow. yeah? and they want me to be the ambassador trainer so i'll be huh. doing a program for ambassadors awesome and then training the ambassadors. And I'm saying, I just want to do Europe. I'm not interested in coming. Eventually I can do global, but you, you get a guy or a woman who does the California or North America. And, you know, so um, I'll, I'm talking to Moses on Monday, tomorrow. Today's Sunday, yeah. It's my Sunday now. Is it? Fuck, I don't know. Anyway, it's got a day in it. And uh, I'm talking to him and I'll talk, I'll mention you in Canada. I don't think they've got anyone in Canada yet. Because that's a really... That was good. There's huge funding behind that. And I think it would fit perfectly with what you're doing. as a facility for that work. And, and if you add in, you know, you can say that I've got like 25 years of design into communication tools specifically for facilitators. And that whatever I use here, I can make available to all the other trainers. And uh, come up with a little business uh, proposition on that. Great. Well, it will help that your name's Elijah. Will it? That will, that, that will really help with the Jewish share. Uh, well, uh, I, I do feel like I've got a very strong uh, something with the Jewish people. Like, I mean, it's Elijah, right? I mean, it's, he was the predecessor yeah. to Jesus. And he's like, if anything I knew, Elijah came in and at the beginning, he was telling the king, okay, king, you're way off. And then he had to run to the hills because the king at some point probably immediately after the, the prophet left, wanted him dead. <laughs> so Elijah had to go hide in the, in the hills. And I feel like exactly like that. Like the prophets give feedback to the leaders that you're, you're doing wrong. And, is, and essentially yeah. there's a battle, right? Between the... Yeah. What the is my dream? What does it mean? Ah, well, um, and if you get the dream wrong and you interpret the wrong way that I don't like, I'm going to cut your head off. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's where do we begin here? Uh, so, and who was Isaiah? Isaiah was even before, wasn't he? I think yeah. Isaiah was was even older. I guess I should know all these things, but yeah, me too. But uh, yeah, so what was I going to say? Um, that's Moses who leads them out of the. He he's trying to lead. So there's many Jews that don't want to be part of the Jewish framework anymore. And they see how 
dogmatic it is and how you must live by night. So he, he, he was very brave and he uh, left that world and he, all, he also had a children with a non-Jew out of wedlock. <gasps> uh -oh. Pariah. Plus he's one of the elite. Plus his father is one of the respects. So his father said, you know what? That's what he loves. Is you, you do what you have to do. I'll support you. Wow. His father's in a coma in New York. And because Moshe thought he would die, he named his son after his father. And in the Jewish community, you don't do that until the father's dead. It's, oh. a, it's like a huge no-no. And his father's still alive. So he's now a pariah because of that. So he's, <laughs> so he's not in it, but he also needs the money and the network. So he's like, <gasps> so he's been very, very brave. So to actually own his Moses nature and, his, and he looks like a rabbi. He's got a gray beard and he's, you know, he's got the white with a collar thing. And he always wears white, keeps it simple for his washing, he says. And uh, yeah, but I think he's going to go back to Brussels where his, the base was. But there'll be a base in LA and because California and LA and San Francisco, they, they just do things at massive scale very quickly. So we'll see. But I also, the gamification side, they, they pegged me as the guy who can do the gamification side. And it was Big Alex who said, it's one thing to do this face-to-face -face stuff, but in the time of COVID, it might be hard, easier to do a publishing model where you have Zooms with really interesting people as facilitators, and that's published. And then basically you've got level one entry. So you'd have, you'd maybe have 20, 30 videos of explaining everything, and then they go online and purchase a subscription, and they say, right, and then you can do webinars, and you get paid you know, like, like that. And then once people get to a certain level, they can then go into the, you know, and they get a card and they get a, you know, but it's a game. You, you, you know, I've attended now 20 events. I've got my 20 event badge, but like Alcoholics Anonymous, done it. Right, now what? Now you can mentor somebody else or you can become a facilitator in your area, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all, it's all in hand and I'm sure it's going to work out uh, well. There's been a lot of explosion around it and people coming in. And Is it already made? Or the, the tech isn't made, but the uh, the business plan is all the there's a huge amount of stuff been written already about facilitated training, hosting, other things. But uh, yeah, I'll, when I'll, I'll I'll send him a text saying just remind me to talk about Elijah Gnatia, and he'll go Elijah. Okay, nice, nice. He is trusts it, anyone. He trusts Moses. Trusts anyone I send him. He says you've sent me just superb people and connected me to wonderful people. So. He's very happy about that, and uh, he listens to what I'm saying. So, so this is Moshe or Moses or both of this. Well, he, this is this is the thing, you know. He in the in his name is wonderful name Moshe Garalik, a great name. I'll send you a link, and there's photos of him online meeting like the president of this, the leader of the UN. You know, he's the, the Jews with the Hasidic stuff, and he's there with his little. But he left all that, uh, so he. Some sometimes, he, but he doesn't. He's not claimed as Moses-ness, you know, because Moses led them out and then was basically left and just see ya. He died. <laughs> I know what happened. I don't know yeah. if you've had this experience where, where, if you've had any type of revelation that you you dare to share with anyone, like it's, it's, it's. It, it's like I'm sure Moses said when the burning bush came and whatever was happening and he got the commandments, he got whatever it was and, and he part of was going, do, do you know who those people are? Do you know how they think? Like, I'm coming off the mountain and I'm going to tell them that God spoke to me and I, I, I believe in you. I have no doubts, but come on. I mean, and that's what I, I was on this. Can I tell you, I was on this mountain yeah, retreat, you know, rainbow gathering and I taken some mushrooms. And I went up this uh, stream and I got this strong message and I was meditating on this beautiful spot and I could see, I don't know, like mother earth appeared in, in the sky and it filled the whole sky. I think it was just another being, but it appeared like mother earth to me, but there was some being that filled the whole valley that I could see that was communicating with me and said, you can bring the people up to this particular place in the mountains and it'll heal them. Kind of like a healing kind of thing. Right. And so I'm, I, I was meditating, I was praying for the planet and playing, you know, usually asking for forgiveness for our, our species <laughs> stupidity and asking for help in whatever way that they, they can help us. And so then I came down and I'm walking down the stream and you're 
you're coming forward. And I, I can't, and there was a couple of people there that were, I was linked to. So I did have a connection with them. And, you know, I, I'm not quite so naive that I come like, oh my God, this happened. And look at, look at what I'm saying. And you'd better believe me. And da, 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 da. And I'm, I'm, I sort of have trepidation knowing yeah. and I start sharing it a little. And you can just, you can see in their eyes immediately. Like the, the first thing is they don't believe you. The second thing is it's, it's too uh, Yeah, he's high. He's, he's not. Yeah. 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 And especially, you know, especially me in one sense, like I'm already on the, uh, the weird spectrum or something. But I, I mean, I figure like I, I really trump the wizard archetype. Like I tell people I'm a wizard. So I, I sort of try to give a predecessor to the dress and the action and everything about me. I, mean, I want the community to know, well, he thinks he's a wizard, you know, whether, whether they think I'm sane or not is another thing. Oh, you are. Well, I think yeah, so. I, I acknowledge that. What that I'm saying or that, that we, I'm... <laughs> Oh, you're definitely saying this is lovely fishing boat going by at the, just at that moment. Uh, they are off to do their dawn fishing. Okay. Beautiful. Wow. Boy, you got a nice spot there. So how is your so let me, Yeah, so let, let me tell you my pendulum. Let, let me tell you my pendulum story. So back in the day, in a place called Guild, Guildford, which is actually Golden Ford, and it's a it's full of light workers. This place, it's on a very interesting hills and mountains in this valley. And there's a woman there called Mo Usher, who doesn't use the internet. Use old phones, doesn't have a smart, just you know, she's in her 60s now and she does healing. She does, she's Reiki Master 3, she's reflexologist, she's a coach. She's, you go into a room, it's covered in certificates, right? You need these for the 3D world, you see. You have to look as if you've got a stethoscope and the thing that they, they, then they talk to you. She goes to local council and drives them nuts. You go, oh, here's Mo Usher again. What's she going to complain about now? So she's full on. She gets people who use the internet to send her documents downloads, channeling, everything she's got. And her house is just full of documentation. She's amazing. And she saw me and went, right. And she did some work with me, a lot of work. And I was, and she she'd go, well done, shake my hand. And she goes, before we start, we're going to call in the ancestors. Who do you want? Metatron, Let Metatron's coming in, right? Metatron, Brother Klaus, let's have Jesus in, let's have this guy, <laughs> let's have Raphael. So the, the room actually heated up, so it kind of says, and then she used the pendulum a lot. She's using her heart-shaped thing, like one to 10. Hmm, I'm doing this work. And then we had this work on, on Jesus because I was raised in the church. I, mean, I was raised, I knew everything about him. All the stories, the parables. I was always first in the quiz. Everyone wanted me in their team because I knew all about it. No, 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 Isaiah's after chapter four. No, that's not. <clears throat> and then... Um, there was a moment where she said, uh, I was very emotional. I said, hmm, do you want me to do the pendulum to see if you're actually the reincarnation of the man, Jesus? And I wept for uh, five minutes and I was cracking up. And she said, okay, I've got my answer. So, you know, I've had these experiences a lot and I see angels a lot and I've experienced that, experienced him, this thing on my shoulder. And... It's, it's terrified me. I said, no way I'm going to take that on. You know, no way. And then Chris Thompson, whose name is Christopher John Thompson, Christ Om Son and Christ Son of Man, John, he's John. He's like, loses his head all the fucking time, goes nuts. And uh, he's he's pushed me towards this, saying, you know, you've got to just accept it. And I said, you know, so now I'm talking to Moses, talking to Elijah. That's Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a character. I can also play uh, some twat from whatever. I, you know, I think we all can play these roles. There are many Jesus out there. The guy who's like the wonderful black Jesus from, uh, what's the, is it Maxi Priest? The guy who, who sings for uh, Faithless. That guy is pure Jesus. You know, Michael Jackson is trying to play a black, white Jesus. You know, so there's plenty of prophets. Out there. Russell Brand, classic looks like Jesus you know a man grows his hair long he's got a beard he can look like he's got a slim body yeah. you just see a few parables here and there ah this guy's Jesus you know um, there's hundreds of them and there's hundreds of Buddhas and there's hundreds of 
you know, there's loads of us here, spiritual beings accessing that information. So it's not that, but the actual physical embodiment. Uh, and Steiner said that every thousand years is when you reincarnate. So in, in, you know, and Moses actually, in the, I left the group Uni One. I left it. And then I came back in again. It's because Chris Thompson affected my mind saying, you have to leave them, you have to come to me. You have to come to me. So I did. And I came back in, I said, I apologize, my thinking, I allowed my thinking to be moved. And then Moses said, well, you know, he said to me, you know, uh, a guy called Jesus left and promised he'd come back. And then big Alex laughed his head off. Uh, so yeah, I'm having this frank conversation with Moses about these things. But uh, yeah, and Jesus was a weaver, uh, spy, uh, spiders are there. And when I was in LA, I only took LSD once. What? And I took LSD once in 2000 and when, oh, yeah, 2000, no, 1993, actually. And no, 1994, 95, I took LSD with a guy called John Murphy and a few others. And I kept turning around and around and around. Right? Like I just wouldn't stop turning around, like as if I'm on a spit, right? <clears throat> I was in bed. We're all in bed together, and I'm going, right, Graham, would you stop fucking turning around? I, said, I can't stop it. I'm, just I'm being, I'm being turned around, right? So, uh, and then I told my years later, I told this Jamaican friend of mine, this Jamaican cultural genius, and he said, Ah, yeah, yeah, that, that's actually what happened. Jesus, he was put in a spit and burnt. Yeah. All of that stuff, the torture, and everything else, and then the whole story around Mary Magdalene actually. When Jesus was, you know, crucified and taken away, she was pregnant. She got away to Egypt and then went traveling, allegedly. You know, so who knows the real story? I'm sure the script's somewhere in the, the Gospels of Thomas or whatever. Uh, that's been the, the powers that be are trying to rubbish the, those Gospels as well and that they don't exist. But um, yeah, there's a whole bloodline that exists. And, and you know, who knows? Maybe, you know, I'm, I'm part of that lineage uh, that makes more sense to me I, I much prefer accessing ancestral memory like me accessing the Stuarts, the Picts, the, the Celts the, and I've been to northern France which is where the Stuarts came from I speak French when I speak French I feel more myself and I, I, that sounds better to me than English <clears throat> um, and I knew Aramaic as soon as I saw it I said that's Aramaic um, so that ancestral thing, knowing that, and I've got a strong connection with India as well. So yeah, I mean, I think there are many of us around and we're gathering. Gregory Shepherd, of course, he's another Jesus shepherd in his flock. I know a guy called Phil Shepherd, who's an who's amazing guy. He came up with this wonderful concept called Imaginations United. Imaginations United. Great, simple. Use it, Phil. And actually, I'll send you the link. If you write this down, it's called Thought Space, T-H-O-R-T -T Space. And you could plug into that and you could use your stuff. So it's thoughtspace.com, I think. <clears throat> and what they've done is got 3D models of like globes. And you click on one, you add your thoughts and you link it to others and you basically categorize it. And you have a 3D representation of how you think. And other people can come in plug their stuff in and before you know it you can see ah and you spin them around and go move it so that's a 3d oh, wow. so I can, and i can put you in touch with with phil who's locked down in australia i mean it's it's i've had if i look now and see i guess the process i've been through where i was on a call today right with uh is it in, Synergy Mastermind, part of this online festival, and uh, uh, Remind put it on, and his family and I have been very close for quite a long time. And he highlighted my work to everyone there was a like, leader of a company, leader of a massive network. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's looking at a One Earth, a New Earth manifesto, and looking at okay, how to attain the UN sustainability goals and how to create a Sort of a, a different type of Wikipedia to organize the knowledge to act, to get these goals done, and this was the first one, and it was a part of this online festival and uh, very impressive group of people. And we had been—I made up a few maps, and I'll send these maps to you. 
um, after mm -hmm. this. And because these maps are where you can plug people into teams. I think just hearing from you, you've got so many amazing people that what one of the things we can do is the idea is like we're reorganizing them into shared knowledge. <laughs> we're going from corporations to a new paradigm infrastructure. And to me, we're both originators. And so that like there's in the school of conscious communication, there are originators, administrators, teachers, facilitators, students, and clients, those six. And that's what are in the maps there. So the maps are a reference point for the people within the school to then figure out who everyone else is in, in relationship to us. You could change, if you were just gonna have, let's say the game of now, you could look at your relationships in the game of now and change that one box of originators and uh, students and teachers and put your own relationships in, create your own set of relationships. Like it could be like a, the tech team, it could be uh, the test team, it could be the, your business team, the players, like whoever are the relationships that are within the game, because at some point you have to define who they are. And so that, I, that sorry, that reminds me, my, my phone's reminding me I should go to my desk to write. Um, did you talk to Alex Fredericks yet? I don't think so. I put you in touch with Alex. He sent you an email saying, looking forward to talking to you, Elijah. I, He's the guy I think there's a couple of people that you put me in comment or someone has like, I got so many coming in these days, not to boast or anything. I'm just not used to. Well, I would say Alex is definitely a guy you have to talk to. He's going to do the whole Golden Spider thing because Alex is the guy that met Gino and Gino did his whole thing with him. And Alex said, if you do that again, I'll drop you where you stand. <laughs> and Gino said, hey, man, I like you. <laughs> And Alex says that, you know, you just punched you know, and he goes like that, you know, then, boop. and he'll go, hi, still here. He's a trickster. Can't, can't be, you can't do anything to him. Just ignore you or whatever. What's Alex's <clears> last name? <throat> Fredericks. And <clears throat> if you look in your emails, Alex Fredericks, he's okay. based in Philadelphia. He's based in Philadelphia. He's going very soon to Costa Rica. As soon as you can get out, he's getting out of America. Okay. Going to Costa Rica, he's raised millions for a new project. He met Lou Reed. He was going to do Lou Reed's perfume line. Um, he used to be a Sony record executive. Oh, I remember you telling, okay, I remember. Uh, yeah. Massive connections. And I'm going to meet him in Geneva. So. Okay. He's there to do a three quarters of a billion dollar deal for a hotel chain in Switzerland. <laughs> he, he said, I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not a business leader. I'm a rambunctious individual and I get things done. <laughs> yeah, I don't do fucking interior design. I do feng shui. <laughs> I'm a one man band. I'm a psychopath. I'm a fucking mercenary. All right? That's it. You say that's that wall, break it down. I'll run at it. I'll bend my head and I'll smash through it. <laughs> that's him. Clean up, direct. Done. He says, right. I say, okay, what have you got? Show me what you got. Tell me what you got. Right. Okay, that's shit. That's great. That. Don't do that. So he says to me, just fucking write it. Yeah. Who would know this, know that, just get it fucking well, was, This it, was, this was your business partner, right? Is this the guy? Oh, he's going to be my, he's going to be my business manager, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and I loved it because, you know, he talked to Chris Thompson, who's love his knowledge. He's a fucking asshole. All right? That's it. He's a professor, he's, that, he's got great knowledge, very dogmatic, can't read it. Yeah, fucking asshole. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> He gave all his knowledge to Uni One, who basically and they just ignored it. I said that we're not going to do that. And he went, "All right, fine. I'm just going to turn up and listen, just to learn. I'm here to learn. I'm doing nothing for you until there's money and offer a table. I'll do it. I'll, I'll find you money if you want it." But he knew Epstein, Brian Epstein. He was a he knew this guy, and he used to be employed as a bouncer for very wealthy celebrities in New York, and he would go around protecting them and. You know, he, he's got people to Madison Square Garden, but he's not the face. He's not the guy. I'm just one guy, a lone individual. I'm a pure mercenary. It's all I care about, me and my family. So it's very clear and easy to deal with. Yeah. There's, there's no bullshit at all. He's got his big beard and he's got his shiny head, big beard, and he's like, he's like a jiu-jitsu something belt. I don't know. Have you, have you told him anything about me? 
Uh, I think I just introduced you both. I said Elijah's got some great stuff, some great content, and he's I mean, he, he's really very good at publishing models. So he'd say, right, we get videos, we get all that, you get your content, you do this, you build a structure, you do that, you plug it in, you build your community, you have other people doing that, X, Y, Z. He's, he's got it all written down. He's got a huge matrix, or he's got a huge spreadsheet. Here's all your social media, here's the different things. Here's on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, tick, 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 two hours networking. It's all structured. Gotcha. Because it's boring, it's dull. That's what I do. I make sure everything is do, 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 do. Yeah, and that's it. And then he said his his favorite quote is, two bulls in a mountain, uh, looking down at a field of cows, and the father bull says to son bull, "Hey, son, which one of these cows do you want to fuck?" Son looks at the cows and goes, eh, "I think maybe that one." He goes, "No, son, we're going to go down and fuck them all." <laughs> right? And he says, "That's what I want. You, you don't want little bits here. No, you're going to do the fucking whole thing. You're going to get this book out." You want to build a following, the first one, the second one, and you do the whole fucking thing. So that's the kind of guy he is. And he'll, and he'll do it for his cut because he knows, right, I know this can be big. Yeah. Oh, he looks at your work, great, this can be big. I can get into corporates, I can get into this, that, get your team, I'll find that, I'll find your CEO who does all the blah, blah, blah. You come in, do your stuff, go, thank you very much. So he's your access to money, not Gino. Okay. Gino will just. Well, to me, like I give, I guess, three tests. And, uh, uh, Attila, he, he actually no, I didn't give him three. I gave him two. <laughs> I didn't give him a third chance. For the third. Maybe you should give him a third chance. Well, I always <laughs> like. To me, it's symbolic. Like to me, you, can, you really can't get a lot of people's attention until you kind of throw them off the ship once. You know, they don't they don't pay attention. Like so, Gino, that was my first test. I just wanted to see who he was in regards. And so that he didn't do that well on that test, in my opinion. He, his his stature fell very low, I might add. Uh, I mean, I've had enough of people who who are, you know, in a position where, you know, they have no idea how hard it is, you know, and, and looking at what me and you are doing and the extent of what we're doing and how good it is and what we're doing it with, and looking at him and his uh, tenured uh, safety zone. And no, I mean my yeah, talking about talking about entrepreneurship. Yeah, you know, talking about it. You know, if he was really to say, right, I'm gonna leave my wife. I'm gonna sell the house. I'm gonna put all my money into that and focus 100% on Antarabab because that's about saving people who want to commit suicide. It's a beautiful yeah. project. He's done a huge amount of work. Focus on that, not the 50 other plates he's spinning. Yeah, because that's good for his, for his ego. You know, hey, I'm doing all this really busy. Well, he even said to me, don't put. He said to me, "Don't put me in touch with anybody else." I said, don't, "Me? Don't put you." Is the you, you're like you're the guy who throws here? Here's forty five people. I'm gonna bring into a group with fifty people. What's this? Hi everyone. Oh, I, I did. I didn't. Fit. There was one thing I just wanted to say. Where when I was looking at, I've had very limited interaction with everybody. Like I, I pretty much was isolated, just doing my work. And just focused on my work rather than as because as soon as you go into the regular world, right? Like there's there's hundreds of thousands of organizations and there's a hundred like there, there's no end to the people that to me could use at least what I got. And as soon as I start working with them, I mean you could spend the rest of your life with one big corporation, right? I mean, they'll just suck exactly. all your time's gone. And so the time mm -hmm. I put into design, I you know, I've been in we're both time millionaires, right? We have our own time. Mm -hmm. We create our own world that way and so we can create a much different way than if you're always you know chasing the dollar and doing all the things you do logistically just to freaking get that dollar is is like well, I think that's where Alex, Alex comes in with the publishing models because then you can just create it all and then just sit back and they can do all that stuff you don't you don't physically have to be and you choose you say right I quite like to work with yeah the Waldorf hotel chain Happy. Yeah. you've got 20,000 employees we create a model my fee is 1 million take about a month yeah yeah no problem there you go and you go that was easy yeah and yeah. you go right, now you better deliver so, well that's not up to me as well it's up to both of us we, you have to engage with us and do it otherwise it's not going to work and it's traditionally so hard to do that kind of massive organizational change because they've got to change their entire way of thinking about it the way they relate the way they communicate the whole lot which is why Stephen Covey what well, he's dead now but when he was writing his books and the seven habits 
he says it three years. When he went into consultancy in a company, a big company, he said, take, this will take three years. And if you're serious about it, commit to three years. I just read a paper uh, by a company that was using Buckminster Fuller's work on why organizational transformational change doesn't work. And he had, and they had a hub, they have these, the hub to all the different functions and quite like what I have, right? I have this mm -hmm. idea, but then they said it fails because they don't get the sort of real buy-in from everyone. And that little team that's in the middle doesn't quite understand all the variety that's necessary. And, and the, the answer was to connect every piece with every piece so that everything is connected to everything in the model. And it isn't just this sort of a, you know, the, 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 the silo. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it really showed me like my work is, is quite silo-ish, but in fact, everything is connected to everything and the research is connected. To well, I mean, I'll give you this. One of the things I could was group zero. You did this years ago. I remember group zero was basically you find, and you can do this quite easily identifying the people who are most networked. So even the receptionist probably knows more people than the CEO. Right. Receptionist knows everybody. So if you get that person in a group, you get the sort of techie guy who knows everybody because he deals with all the complaints all the time. And you get people who you don't think are leaders, but actually they know more than anybody else. Then you make them group zero, you train them, and then they start to affect the main group. You don't you only need like a small group of five to ten. Rather than trying to, you know, the usual stuff is right, we've got a seminar, everyone's packed in. People are like tired, they've been traveling and they go, yeah, there's another, yeah, another initiative from the company to reorganize. Restructuring, which means we're going to lose our jobs. Yeah. But then they go for the team that influence and then they go, no, no, this is cool. This is, we're doing this different. Oh, then you have a room space. It's empty. They just go in there and they write stuff and they start to engage with a space that's like zero space. And it's from that one space and those people, it slowly affects everybody. I would add that in the community communication room, like one thing I think maybe for what you have for the kitchen, and you're saying that the portals in the cupboards, but I think there also might be a way of pressing a button where the kitchen transforms into this sort of like command center. And that's kind of like the, the planetary guardians are trained. I mean, and maybe it's you go through the portal into a command center. Or maybe you can turn the kitchen into a command center. Because one, one big download I got was uh, I was giving a presentation and it was all based upon the meal, the metaphor of the meal that you know kind of makes sense that for humans, the most important thing is the three meals a day. And that if you use that as your reference point for organizing everything, then you can look at like the concept of you know who's making the meal, where's the food come from. And uh, you can look at the whole process of, of eating as the, the teaching tool for teaching all other processes. Well, it could be for the, uh, the, the tactics and strategy day that uh, a group goes to, because the tactics and strategy day, I, I could have spent like a decade on writing it. I, I just skipped through much. I said they went there and they did discuss that. And then there's a session after lunch. And then we put a simulation of different scenarios that what could happen in the battle. <clears throat> and then it could be that a group, Elijah, you know, well, Captain Sweep takes a group through the kitchen and it becomes a, and actually it could morph into a, an oak, uh, sorry, an um, olive tree grove. Because up here in Andros, there's, a, there's a, a grove of 13 olive trees. And you sit there. I fell asleep in there years ago when I woke up with a, with a donkey looking at me. <laughs> so this, and then there was a, a chicken came in and I just thought, where the fuck am I? As a, you know, so it's a great, I, might, I must go there again. So that kind of communication center through the trees, the mycelium is connecting to everything. Right. Um, so you can put that in the kitchen. Yeah. And then the, the pixie loons could be involved with that. But yeah. And then. Well, the, pic, the pixie loons. Yeah, yeah. Like sit, like there's various stations where you're looking at different maps and there's a time translator in the middle. So the, the pixies could be at their specific kind of stations because at some point the whole thing could turn into a spaceship and take off. Yeah, and then you can go into the garden and the, with the, the time traveling compost loo as well. And then, uh, yeah, you can kick Gina out the room, get out, go back to the. <laughs> he the, tries the, to pull his. Get, get the room. <laughs> hey guys, get out, go and do some networking. 
Does he know that we're we're talking and filming at all? Um, I'm sure. I'm sure at some level. I don't level think he, so. He, I don't know. I mean, he. Uh, the thing is, he did the energy work on me when I met him. He did his qigong, and it did move something in here, shifted a bit, which was useful. And then he was in a strange mood. We were walking back. He was a bit tired, but he, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm going to get it sorted out." He goes, "Let's hope so." That was his parting words. But then we got on a bit. We get on a bit better now. We've not had a chat for a while because once Chris Thompson spread this rumor that I'm an alcoholic and that I'm this, that, the next thing, Gino just called me and he said, "Hey, man." You okay? Said, yeah, I'm fine. Do you know? Well, I just want to tell you that, you know, I said, yeah, okay. He's free to say what he wants, but, you know, I'm drinking my coffee this morning. You know, I, yeah, I have a few beers there. I like beer. I'm a Scottish. I, I was raised in beer. It's not a problem for me. I could drink five pints and be fine. So what's a, what's a problem? And he goes, well, you know, he's saying this and that. He loves you a lot. You know, he really loves you. I said, yeah, I love him too, but can't work with a guy. Yeah, yeah, he's gone. He's lost it a bit. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned. I said, well, I'll leave you to that one. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. And then this other guy yesterday sent me this WhatsApp. He's going, you're a fucking this, a fucking that. You and your friends, you're fake fucking friends. And you're fucking this. And you, you fucking came to my house four years ago and met my fucking turkey. And you're a fuck charade. Fuck, fuck. And I showed it to Nigel. He went, yes, he's, he's clearly a spiritual master. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. still, going bit, still going on about the turkey I ate four years ago. Uh, you mean that's when you ate the turkey in the fridge? Oh, this is this Chris Thompson? Yeah, I know Chris Cochran. I came to Chris Cochran's house, bless him, four years ago. And his wife is this diminutive little Thai woman who's very shy. And, you know, and he's saying, You've scared the fuck out of my wife, man. You know, your sexiness and your your movement, you know, she's like, oh, it doesn't, she's terrified, doesn't want to look at you. And then one night I was hung, I, so then he, I was smoking cigarettes in the back garden, putting out, he got me some beer, he bought me a big crate of beer because he knew that's what I wanted, I was that, and then one night I was hungry, I got up, looked in the fridge and there was just, you know, turkey slices, so I just went, went ah, ate them all, put it in the bin, went back to bed, she gets up in the morning, wants turkey slices for her bread in the morning and it's not there, she goes, where the fuck is it? Hey, did you eat the turkey? I said, yeah. What well, the I'm so fucking pissed at you because I said, okay, I apologize. I was hungry. You did say mi casa su casa and I can have everything I want from the fridge. So I just took you for your word. And then he kicked me out after he made some excuse that his other daughter wanted to, to be there and didn't, didn't like me being there. And was, uh, anyway, he will calm down and then he will say, hey man, really sorry for Vomiting on you. So, well, yeah, I'm used to it. Join the queue. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, I think I, I got to get back to this working. Yes, right. So, I've got the maps. I'll print them out on Monday. I'll, and I'll start. Days. And what I'll do is I have another friend who's a uh, uh, would like to get a full set of the maps and I need to collate them together. So what I'll do is I'll start to send you maps as I find them and then you mm -hmm. can have your own kind of set and then uh, your cool. feedback is invaluable in any way you want to use them for what you're doing. It's, uh, you know, feel cool. and uh, we can look from business possibilities and different things and uh, Yeah, and please do email Alex. Yeah. And uh, do a Zoom with him. Yeah. <laughs> he basically works from 6 a.m. to midday-ish uh, Philadelphia time, which is three hours ahead of you. Okay. Okay, yeah, and I, I don't know if you've... Have you spoken to him about me or just written about me? I think I spoke to him and I wrote an email to both of you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I find, you, you know, I, I'm sure you're good at it, but just the, the setup, right, is, is it goes a lot better if you sort of give some context. Um, I think a lot of people might be like, well, I'll reintroduce, I can reintroduce, I can write an email again saying, hey, guys, you know, you know, I talked to Elijah the last few days. He's, he's been very busy on this, this work here. Just to remind you, <clears throat> this is what he's doing. He's yeah. a, I could send him the two maps as a sort of, here's things to look at. And I think this would fit with the publishing model you're talking about, Alex, and I think you're the guy to, to support this. I mean, the thing for Alex is to be the sort of the doer in this 
you know, you're a leader, I'm a leader, but we're also magnets and doers and creatives and intuitives and all the rest yeah. of it. He's like, I'm a fucking doer. So he, he takes point and says, right, I'll get you. He's also a resource so he can get money and people. Um, and uh, <clears throat> he's pretty intuitive as well. And then he's got links to lawyers and he's got lawyers and accountants coming out of his arse. So he's got no problem there. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, man. Great, great speaking with you. Thank you for the feedback. It is great, great to hear it. And uh, yeah. we shall be talking soon. We shall. Ciao for now. All right.